G'day, welcome back. I especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. If you missed the last of those silly DM silencing of the machines videos, there's a link up there now, you can go watch that first. But as I promised in that last one, we're going to get back to machining things. Now, uh, this one will actually be <laughs> some, somewhat of a silencing of the machines video as well. But it's one I was going to do before this rubbish hit the fan anyway. So, uh, I'll follow me over here to the belt sander and I'll show you what the problem is. Alrighty, so uh, I actually built this back before I'd finished building the lathe. And this drum here was made by welding a few bits together and drilling holes in it in the drill press. And uh, this is what it kind of looks like when you fire it up. Wobbles around a fair bit. And when you crank it up to, to get it running fast enough, it does this. shakes the hell out of it. So what I'm going to do is uh, cast an aluminium version of this and machine it up. Alrighty, so uh, this uh, proved to be a little little more difficult to make than I was hoping. I wanted to make it uh, hollow but I was having all sorts of problems uh, getting, getting it to cut straight up and down on this tends to flex away too much and then it'll cut it on an angle and wasn't great. So I've uh, just mocked it up solid and uh, in the end I had to clean it up a bit on the uh, belt sander of all things. So that one's ready to rock uh, once I get some plaster on it. Now my mate that did the, uh, uh, the 3D printing for me, he gave me these three parts here and said have a go at casting with these 3D printed parts. So I've been holding off waiting to, for something else to cast and I'm going to try casting this up. Now I've got a little bit innovative, I think. Uh, so this main one at the bottom and I've just glued these two smaller parts uh, onto the side of the sprue. We'll see what happens, how they go. I mean these are nothing, they're all misshapen or damaged or whatever, so they're, they're nothing. So this is nothing more than a bit of experimentation. So we'll get these things all plastered up and hopefully tomorrow morning I'll be able to get out the back and cast them up. Alrighty, so uh, I thought I'd show you something uh, my daughter did for me and I finished this morning, it took me about 40 minutes after the last time I did some casting. And previous, I sieved the sand that I bought through this sieve here. Not all that fine. Got all the rocks and lumps of stuff out of it but she shoved it all through this one which is you can see that is very fine and they end up with something that looks like this super fine sand so hopefully what I'm hoping is that will oh it's dusty that will uh, prove the finish on all my castings so I just thought I'd show you that and I'll get on with setting all this up get ready Alrighty, so for the benefit of my recent subscribers, this is my Thai barbecue that I use the furnace. My crucible's uh, in the centre, loaded up with all the offcuts from that extrusion I use for the uh, doors. I don't know how that'll melt, but we'll see how it goes. And I use a vacuum cleaner to uh, as a blower, and I've just turned it off momentarily because it's a bit noisy. That will uh, it's been a bit slow getting going today, but I'll. I'll turn the vacuum cleaner back on, and once that's all well and truly alight, I'll put the lid back on and start the process. Well, I've ended up with not quite a full crucible, and I don't know that it's enough, but I'll pour the, uh, the belt sander drum first, because the other one's only experimental, so it won't matter if it runs out. Well, spilling it, half of it wouldn't have helped, but uh, anyway, we'll see how we go. Well, viewers, as I noted there before, I suspected that uh, I didn't have the metal hot enough. 
and this one proves the point. It only got this is that cheap, oh sorry, the lightweight foam which burns away really easily. That's the top of that that first uh, that square plastic thing which is still down there in the sand. And it was the way this didn't seem to want to run when I was pouring it that, I, that made me think it wasn't hot enough. Uh, this one formed up, not properly, but this one started to form up and then it just stopped. But the uh, luckily, the one that matters seems to have formed up alright. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, the finish on this is much better than I used to get with that heavier sand. So uh, I'll go and quench this and we'll have another look. And it's come up fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. That'll be perfect for what I want. So I'll cut, cut that sprue off and uh, we can get into machining that up. Alrighty, don't really feel like being out here. The, the current feels like temperature out in here is 38 degrees. Pretty damn hot. I hope you can't hear that. I've got that little fan I bought blowing on my back because I'm just sweating profusely here. Now I've got the decibel meter set up out in the driveway. And all I'm going to do today is machine this bit here. And then we'll go and check out and see what it looks like. I think that'll do that. Uh, this is only here, this left get reduced down a fair bit or even mostly cut off yet. But I just left that on there so I can hold that while I put the tape and finishes on here. I don't know how much you need that car that just started out there. But anyway, uh, I'm going to call it quits for today and I'm going to go out and check out what that uh, decibel meter has been saying. Alrighty, so looking at this, I think you can ignore that first two bars, the first two columns. Because that would have been me trying to shut the door. Uh, I had a lot of time getting it closed. Now there is that one spike in the end of the second column. I don't really know what that was, but that's up over what's up at 90 decibels, getting close to 90 decibels. And I think the last column, those spikes in there, are probably when the car started. Alrighty, so while you weren't looking, I flipped this around and I've faced it off. So now I'm just going to uh, very lightly skim the outside of this until we get it fairly round because I do want to machine a taper onto it. So uh, I don't want to take too much of it as long as it's uh, touching and I clean up the centre there. I think I'll be happy with that. And then I'll drill uh, the guts out of it. It's cleaned up pretty well considering uh, I only dressed the outside of this up after I glued them together with uh, by eye on the belt sander so uh, not too much more to come off that to clean it up. So we've got left oh, a little bit more because the, the taper will get rid of these bits out on the ends I think but uh, that one's a bit big maybe that one is too. I think that'll do me for that. Um, I don't know what sort of angle to put on this. I'm thinking maybe one or two degrees is about all to the centre and back down that way. It's pretty hot that thing. Uh, I want to get all this done and drill it out and then bore it a bit while I've still got my solid tool post on here and then I'll switch over to the, uh, to the compound. But we'll get this drilled out now. There's actually a bit of chain lube. It used to be uh, the same colour as the WD-40, but it's black these days. So I'm not sure what's going on there.
Alrighty, righty, so I bore the inside of that out of that uh, battery's and the flat light turned this thing off, so I won't bore you with that. Oh, I won't bore you with that boring. Alrighty, stinking hot out here again today. Well, I didn't bore that as much as I thought I wanted to because I just couldn't be bothered. And I don't really want to be making any more noise than I, uh, than I need to. I sound knackered, I've just been trying to close that damn door. It's just hard work. Anyway, so I had to play with this end and I machined it to one degree and it, it just didn't look enough so I've changed it to two degrees. I've now set my DRO to zero at the front edge of this jaw here. So I went to stop and I'll put the same taper on this end as I've got on that end. I really do wonder about myself sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Don't know why I bothered setting that DRO because this wasn't moving, only the slide was. So you might have noticed a couple of sparks flying out there. I nicked the jaws a couple of times. Anyway, so that's that. I'll get some sandpaper and dress that up a bit before I flip it around and machine this back down to the size it needs to be. Alrighty, so while you weren't looking, I uh, polished this thing up a bit. It's come up pretty good. Actually, it's quite. A lot of little pits in it, but that doesn't matter. And I've turned this section down and shortened it up. So now I need to drill it out and ream it to 10 millimeters. And I'll show you why after we finish this. Alrighty, so now I'll put a, uh, a 3 8 drill up through there. Only a set of cheap Chinese reamers I bought, but they seem to do a pretty good job. Uh, Oi. Have a look at that drill. I thought it was three eighths. It's, uh, it's cutting way too much out of that. Oh. Damn. Only 7.9 millimeters, 516. Three eighths drill seems to have gone walk about. I have to machine up a shaft for this, so if it ends up a bit uh, oversized, then I'll just take the machine the shaft a bit oversized. Well, that felt like it was cutting, so hopefully, uh, hopefully it's okay. Oh, this is a piece of uh, 10 mil linear rail, and they measured spot on 10 millimeters. So no, it's a bit loose. Bugger! Oh, I'll just have to machine that shaft just a tad oversized. Anyway, I'll take you over and I'll show you what I'm going to make up next. Alrighty, so this uh, washing machine motor I've got in here, it has a step shaft and it steps down to 10 millimetres. Uh, and I made this up originally, but it's crap, it needs to be remade. So, um, this time I'm going to make it so it'll fit up over the top of here as well. well if I can find a piece of material big enough to turn it down out of. So I'll turn it down so it'll slip over there and fit neatly on here and then have a shaft like this to, uh, to fit into the back of that piece I've just made. Well I really should have had a look to see what I had here before I started doing this. All I've got to make it out of is this, uh, this piece of McPherson strut but at least that thread's uh, a fair bit bigger than 10 mil, so I should be able to get that and that's just about the right size it is chrome plated this bar and it's hard to get through the chrome but I've got through it so we'll get on with it I might not get all that thread off there yet. I'm going to take too much off. I've got nothing else to make this out of.
down that's close. Um, I don't know if I want to even try and make another cut on that. 15 minutes later. Well, I'm going to call that done. A bit of a wobble to it though, isn't it? But nowhere near like it was before. I think I'd better live with that. Alrighty, so I hunted around and uh, found another 3 8 drill, and I've already uh, put the pilot drill down here because that required a lot of pecking, and I just didn't think I'd bore you with that. So now it's 3 8 drill, then the reamer again, and then 14 mil drill inside, just a little bit, a little bit of boring. Alright, that's that one. You know, I uh, was inside there before and I said to my wife, who's lying on the lambs doing what she does best, nothing. Uh, how noisy this all sounds, she said. Oh, it's noisy. It's just as noisy as it was before. How she could ever know that is beyond me because the, uh, as the TV turned up about a million decibels. It's just typical tire. Turn the speed down a bit. Alrighty, that's the reaming done. Well, that's uh, a little bit loose again. A bit cut perfect. Uh, I think the tail stock's out a bit on this. Cut perfectly in the mill when I uh, used it. Cut beautiful 10 mil. Holes, but the part that needs to be 10 mil is about that much all the way down in there, so that's in there a long way. So it's only this bit down here, that section there, it needs to be spot on. Anyway, so now uh, I'm going to stick the 14 mil drill up there, and then I'll have to bore it out just a little bit. That's better. Gotcha. Alrighty, so uh, that's that bit done. All I need to do now is uh, drill and tap a hole in there. And, uh, this is a bit of pitting and everything in this end here, but I don't really care. Lots of little pits in here. So drill and tap a hole in this to clamp that onto that end of this one. Drill and tap a hole in here to clamp that onto the motor. And that all, that part, those two parts are done. Well, viewers, as much as I had to hate to admit it, I've had to remake this part because the other one was, was rubbish. Uh, but I made it round the other way this time so I could make it all in one setup. And the good news is, when I reamed this one, it came out really nice. And that's an awesome fit up in there. Beautiful, no wobbling at this time. So I'll get it out of there. I, don't, I haven't polished this up yet because I'm just about right where I need to be. So. I want to check it on that roller before I do anything else with it, but I'll part it off and get out there and check it out. So after a little bit of a polish up, fits nice on there. Fits really nice on here. Got a complete bloody waste of time because this one's just like the other one. Wobble, 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 wobble. So it's obviously the uh, shaft is bent on this bloody motor. What a bastard. I don't know I'm going to get around that. Anyway, I'll sit down. It's lunchtime. I'll sit down and have a think about it. Just thought I'd check this motor and see, uh, make sure that is that shaft that's bent. And looking at this, I don't think it is. That's certainly not wobbling around like that shaft was. So how the hell did this thing get that far wonky? That's unbelievable.
God damn, why is it that wonky? That's ridiculous. Well, I don't know if you really want to know what I did to this, but I sorted it out. One's really nice now. Uh, I also put a bit of this foam stuff underneath the uh, sander so that it doesn't vibrate the bench so much. But anyway, hang on, I'll move the camera and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I did. So uh, what I did was a little bit, a little bit bush mechanicy, and uh, I marked the the shaft on the motor shaft with some blue felt pen, and then I got in there with this uh, wood chisel which needs sharpening. I got to admit, and just went down in through here and very very slightly touched it to see what what got removed and where it removed it and luckily for me it was on the opposite side of where I had the flat ground for the grub screw so uh, I just very carefully machined a little bit off it bit by bit kept trying it trying it trying it until I got to the point where I could uh, clamp it on the flat with a grub screw and it pulled it straight and so that's all I did and I think I'll get away with that because of the fact that I, I've machined it to fit nicely up onto that larger part up in there. Anyway, so that's it. Runs nice and uh, true now, so I'm happy. Got to shake the hell out of the bench. One other thing I, I wanted to do, I've got another one of these uh, Chinese speed controls. And I did something wrong with this one when I bought it and blew it up. It doesn't work properly. So, but I think I'll buy another one because at the moment I've just got a little like a fan speed controller. This thing will bog down when you really lay into it. So I think I might buy another one of these. They're only about twelve or thirteen Aussie dollars, and fit that to it so that it doesn't bog down when you're trying to sand stuff with it. But anyway, uh, I hope you got something from this. I hope you enjoyed watching me make something for a change. And and. Uh, I'd also like to thank my patrons, and if you'd like to uh, become a patron, uh, there's a link down in the description. And there's also that uh, thanks button down there, you can give me a tip in there if you like. Or also down in the description there's a buy me a coffee, you can stick some in there, because having to spend money doing other things in here hasn't helped things any for my financial situation. But anyway, thanks for watching, and like I said, I hope you got something from it, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.